And in the early 20th century, what happens is, early 20th century, uh, what happens is two new laws uh, uh, of physics are invented. These are given the names quantum mechanics and general relativity. And the situation with these is uh, they don't overturn turn Newton's laws. They extend them. It turns out that in the, in the kinds of situations that Newton was looking at, both quantum mechanics and general relativity uh, reduce down to Newton's laws. So you have a situation where here are Newton's laws, and laws, of which Kepler's laws are a tiny subset. Uh, and then general relativity, I'm drawing a kind of Venn diagram here, uh, is here. Relativity occupying Newton's laws, but then some other stuff. Quantum mechanics looks kind of like this. Extends in a different direction. Uh, let me make these axes specific. I don't like Venn diagrams when they don't tell you what you're actually plotting. Uh, this is mass, so heavy things are when relativity kicks in. This is size, and so small things are when quantum mechanics kicks in. But you can see the problem. We've got two big theories. You really want those theories to be encompassed by one yet bigger theory. Uh, and that is the current goal of theoretical physics, to try and find the one great theory that encompasses both quantum mechanics and general relativity, which contradict each other in various awkward ways, particularly in this region up here. This is called uh, the theory of everything, or TOE. Uh, and the best current guess as to what kind of a theory that will be is that it will be some kind of string theory. I won't go into string theories now. There's big, uh, you can go read many popular books on this. It's very exciting. Uh, there is currently no string theory that really works out all that well, but the, the people who are studying this kind of thing like to believe that that's going to work out sometime in the future. Okay, this is good. We've gone in uh, about. 40 minutes from the start of science to the theory of everything. <laughs> so we're done. Uh, everything else is a detail. And so the whole rest of the course is filling in details. The first of which, so let's start on the details. The first of which, I, I want to go back and catch one of Kepler's laws. And I want to write down the Newtonian modification of Kepler's, whoops, Kepler's third law. And that is an equation that looks like this. A cubed is equal to gmp squared over 4 pi squared. All right, we're going to circle this in red. This is something you're going to want to memorize. Uh, this, it turns out to be a basis of a large fraction of what we're going to do in this course. So let me explain the symbols. A is the semi-major axis, major axis of the elliptic of an elliptical orbit. Elliptical orbit. Remember, these orbits are going to be ellipses. Here's an ellipse. The long side is the major axis. The short side is the minor axis. Half the major axis is uh, the semi-major axis. So this is A right here. P is the orbital period, how long it takes the planet or whatever orbiting object you've got to go around one orbit. M is the total mass of the two things in orbit around each other, of the orbiting bodies. And the existence of that M is why this is Newton's modification. In Kepler's uh, law, it was always planets going around the sun. So the mass was always the same. The mass was that of the sun. Uh, and so it canceled out. But uh, uh, in general, uh, you can use the same equation to deal with things orbiting the Earth or things orbiting the moon, as long as you put in the right mass there. G is a constant of nature, the gravitational constant. And it equals some value depending on what units you use. And we'll come back to that later. 4 is 4. 
Uh, pi is this obscure number from, uh, 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 from elementary mathematics, 3.14159, whatever the heck it is. Uh, and uh, uh, you can you know, punch it in on your calculator or whatever. So you can use this equation to find things out. Uh, now, these numbers tend to be awkward to work with. The mass of the sun is some huge number of kilograms. Uh, G is a very awkward number. Uh, pi is always a mess. Uh, and uh, so, but let me show you a trick. Consider the Earth's orbit around the sun. Around the sun. Uh, the semi-major axis of the Earth's orbit, of Earth's orbit, is uh, a very common uh, uh, unit in astronomy, and it's called an astronomical unit. It's a unit of length, astronomical unit, or AU. Uh, the mass of the sun, mass of the Earth plus the sun is mostly the mass of the sun. Of sun is uh, called a solar mass, obviously, and it's given this symbol, M with a little circle with a dot inside. That's the symbol for the sun. Uh, and what's the orbital period of the Earth? A year, thank you very much. Uh, period of Earth. One year. That's what a year means. It takes a, a year for the, uh, uh, for the Earth to go around the sun. So it must be the case that one astronomical unit cubed is equal to g times the mass of the sun times one year squared, that's p squared, over 4 pi squared. Now, let me show you a trick. Take the general equation, the useful trick, and divide by the specific equation. So a cubed equals p squared gm over 4 pi squared. And we're going to divide that by 1 au cubed equals uh, 1 year squared g mass of the sun over 4 pi squared. We can do this because these two things are equal. So we're dividing both sides of the equation by the same amount. Uh, g cancels, 4 pi squared cancels. That's very nice. We end up with a over 1 au cubed equals p over 1 year squared m over the solar mass. This is just saying that quantity is A in units of an astronomical unit. This quantity is P in units of a year. If this is two years, then this number will come out to two. And this is M in units of the mass of the sun. So you can say A cubed equals P squared M, providing you're dealing in, in units of the mass of, su of the sun, uh, units of one year, and units of an AU. So this is now much easier to work with. You've got rid of all kinds of terrible things. So let me give you the first numerical example of the course. This will be the last thing we do today, namely the orbit of Jupiter. Turns out the distance from Jupiter to the sun is about five times the distance of the Earth to the sun. So A of Jupiter is approximately five times A a of Earth. A of Earth, you'll recall, is this 1 AU. So this is about 5 AU. So how does this equation work out? You get 5 cubed equals P squared M. M is the mass of the sun, one solar mass. And since Jupiter is going around the sun, uh, that's equal to 1. So you have 5 cubed. 5 times 5 is 25. Uh, 25 times 5 is 125. So you end up with 125 equals p squared. So you can answer the question now, what is the orbital period of Jupiter in years? Obviously, that's going to equal the square root of 125. Here's another trick. What's the square root of 125? Quickly. Good. Uh, more decimals? You could type it into your calculator, though, and find out. But let me, give, but let me make a suggestion. Don't take the square root of 125. Take the square root of 121 instead. What's the square root of 121? 11. Much easier, right? Uh, and notice, that, notice this. A of Jupiter is approximately 5. So 5 cubed is approximately 125. And that's, it's just as good to say uh, 121 is equal to the square root. 
uh, uh, the square of the period, and p equals 11 years. That's the orbital period of Jupiter. All right, so now I'm aware that many of you are shopping the course today and may not be back for future lectures. And so I want, for those people who have decided against this, that they'll do something far more worthwhile with their time, uh, I want to leave you with something you can carry through your life uh, from your brief experience with Astronomy 160. And that is the following piece of advice. Don't take the square root of 125. <laughs> take the square root of 121. It's much easier. Uh, this is what the business people call thinking outside the box. Don't do the stupid hard thing. Do the thing that is just as good, but requires some thought first in order to make it easy. And so I will leave you with that. The rest of you, I'll see you on Thursday morning.